So the following examples will also be on the slideshow that's on the course material webpage, but I'm going to type the examples here directly into a MATLAB window. And our first example command will be the creation of a little example matrix. And to make sure it's not a completely boring matrix, we're going to ask for the creation of a magic square. And a magic square is a matrix where the sum of all rows, the sum of all columns, and the sum of the diagonals all have the same value. So if we start up MATLAB, we're going to see a command window like this, and we can type in a expression such as a equals magic of three, and that calls a function that creates a three by three um, magic matrix. It also assigns that result to the variable A. And you can see that MATLAB in the uh, in this command window here immediately tells us the result of that assignment. And that is because we haven't put a semicolon at the end of the line. The convention in MATLAB is if you want an assignment to be quiet, then you append a semicolon and there will be no printout. And if you want to see what has been assigned, you just remove the semicolon. So if you have in an editor a MATLAB program and you quickly want to see what's going on inside, you don't have to add additional print statements to see what has been assigned. You just remove the semicolon it can be quite convenient. Um, if you just call a function without assigning anything, then the result of the function will be automatically assigned to a default variable called answer. So you can type answer here and we have also this three by three uh, matrix. If you want to get the documentation of a function, you type help magic and it gives you a, a brief summary magic n is an n by n matrix constructed from the integers one through n square with equal row column diagonal sums um, <clears throat> how can how else can we create matrices one uh, simple form is a first uh, a vector if you need a vector that just counts a range of numbers you can for example write one to five is the vector of numbers from one to five or 11 to 14 likewise. Um, you can also use start with a negative number. You count from minus one, zero, one. If you count backwards, that will not work like this. Uh, this gives you a empty matrix, a one by a zero matrix. So if you really want to go backwards, you actually have to uh, write, for example, three colon minus one colon zero. We put in another colon and in the middle between the start and the end value, we put a step size. Um, <clears throat> if we want to access an individual a matrix cell. We do this with a round parenthesis. So we had our matrix A assigned originally, but I now want to know, for example, A two comma three. That's the uh, in the second row. The third element gives us a seven here. If you want to access an entire row or an entire matrix, then instead of a row or a, a column number, you can fill in a colon. So if we want to get access to, for example, the 
first row, then we say first row, all elements we put in the colon and we get that. Likewise, if I put in um, the first column, all elements, that gives me the column out. You can see the vectors that we get out here know whether they are horizontal or vertical vectors. So there's a distinction between uh, two types of vectors, um, horizontal and vertical, which in quantum physics you sometimes also use these bra and cat notation for to distinguish the two. Um, this means under the hood there is really not a one-dimensional array type. These are all matrices and it's just an n by one or a one by n matrix that distinguishes the horizontal and the vertical matrices. You can use both notations simultaneously. So if you remember A again, we want to cut out part of the matrix. For example, I want to have rows two to three and columns one to two. Then we get columns one and two from row two and three here out. Um, you can also, again, look at the matrix. Uh, there's a one-dimensional form of accessing the matrix. So if I say I want the first to fifth element of the matrix, then I'm going to get out a vector that goes column-wise through the matrix. So internally, matrices are stored column-wise. This is the first number, second number, third number, fourth number, fifth number, and so on. And that's sometimes useful to know for certain algorithms whether a matrix is stored by row or by column, because if you go through in that order through a matrix, the CPU will be able to access the memory far more efficiently than if you go across and make larger jumps, then you don't make full use of the cache lines that the CPU gets into memory. Um, you, there's also a an end uh, keyword that you can use. So if I say, if I want to get access to the rest of this matrix in one dimensional notation, I can write from six to um, end. And that gives me the remaining elements six, seven, uh, nine, six, seven, two here, for example. And likewise, I could also jump through here in steps. So if I say in this one dimensional notation, I want to start with the first element and then go in steps of four and until I reach the ninth element, that's one way of accessing the diagonal of this matrix eight, five, two here. If I type size of A, then it gives me the matrix size. It's a three by three matrix. And likewise here on the side, you can see there is a workspace window, which you can move a bit, um, where you can see this, the last, you can see the, the value here and you can see the, the variable name to give you an overview of what variables are currently defined in your workspace. So how else can we build matrices? We can say a new matrix C. Um, we construct explicitly by using square brackets and we use elements. The first row is two and seven, and then we separate rows with a semicolon. And the second row shall be three and one. And this way we get two, seven, three, one. And we can also put one matrix inside another. So I can say D should consist of um, first the last um, column of matrix A. So all rows, but the last column of matrix A, followed by uh, 
or again from matrix A, the first row, all columns. But this is a row. We want to put two columns next to each other. So I put a apostrophe here in order to denote that I want the transposed vector. So even though this is a horizontal vector, I'm now rotating it by 90 degrees. And this way, if we can compare this with A, I have here constructed a matrix consisting of the last column and the first row as the second column. So you can easily combine geometrically uh, matrices by just putting other matrices inside square brackets uh, next to each other or on top of each other. Um, <clears throat> There exist also functions to construct matrices consisting of all ones or all zeros. So if we, for example, want a matrix E that consists of a first row consisting of three zeros. So I ask for a one by three matrix of zeros. And then underneath the second row separated again by a semicolon, I want to put the second row of matrix A, second row, all column elements, then I get a first row of all zeros and a second row, which is the second row of uh, matrix A. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you want to select certain matrix elements by value. So for example, we want to get a, a list of all values that are larger than five. What we can do here is we can first write A is greater than five and that's a matrix operation. So uh, the value five, because MATLAB sees that uh, the greater than sign has a matrix on one side and a scalar on the other side, it automatically turns the scalar into a matrix. In some other languages like Julia, this is called broadcasting, where uh, the value becomes gains on, in dimensionality. And then there is an element by element greater than operator, which results in a Boolean value. And the Boolean value is encoded as a floating point number, either zero or one. So we see here a three by three matrix of uh, zeros or ones. And then there is a command find that gives us the one dimensional address of each uh, non-zero value in this matrix. So this will be four numbers, namely the first, two, three, four, five, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth. And if I now actually want to just have a, a vector of uh, the, the actual numbers that are greater than five, I can just feed that vector into the matrix A and I get out a new uh, vector that contains eight, nine, six, and seven, which are all the elements larger than five in column order. <clears throat> Next, we're going to look at matrix multiplication and in case you haven't done a matrix multiplication in a while let's quickly remind ourselves what exactly a matrix multiplication does if you have a for example three by five matrix multiplied with a four by three matrix then you end up with a four by five matrix um, <clears throat> and each element of the matrix product is the scalar product of the corresponding row in the first factor and the column in the second factor. And how can you visualize this quickly? You just take the second factor and move it up and then you move in the result of that matrix multiplication and then we multiply the row of the first matrix with the 
column of the first matrix to get the first element, the second, the same but with the second column to get the second element until we reach the last row and the last column and the scalar product of those two is the last element. Scalar product being the sum of the element wise uh, pair, so this times this plus this times this plus this times this. There are two special cases of matrix multiplication if you apply this rule to a horizontal vector followed by a vertical vector. What do you get out? What dimensionality of matrix? This will be a one by one matrix, which you can also think of as a scalar value. Um, on the other hand, so this is the scalar product of two vectors. On the other hand, if you do the opposite, if you multiply a column vector with a row vector, what do you get out? You get what's sometimes known as the outer product. It's a matrix of all pairwise products. So you get this times this goes here, this times this goes here, and so on. So both of these we can again do in MATLAB. If uh, we write down a matrix and a vector, so this is a two by two matrix, and this is a vertical vector written here horizontally and then transposed, we do get the matrix multiplication we get um, the first line here will be uh, 2 plus 3 because there's a 1 and a 1 here and the second one multiplies the 2 with the 1 and the 3 with 0 that gives us just the 2. So just a star on its own is the, um, is the uh, matrix product. What if you want to multiply element by element two vectors or two uh, matrices, then you use the dot star operator. So putting the dot in front of an operator that normally would require an entire matrix now turns everything into an element by element operation. So here we multiply 1 by 10 gives 10, 2 by 10 gives 20, 3 by 15 gives 45. And as we've seen before, the inner and outer vector product work just like we've shown. If you multiply a row with a column vector, you get a one by one matrix or a scalar out, whereas if you multiply a column vector with a row vector, you get the matrix of all possible pairs. You can also calculate with complex numbers, so the imaginary unit, the, uh, the square root of minus one is both available as an i the variable commonly used in mathematics or as a j, the variable more commonly used in electrical engineering and there are functions available for the extracting the real part, the imaginary part, the complex conjugate, um, the exponential function, the absolute value of a complex number and the phase or the angle of a complex number.